Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the airform pulse here for Einzel Gone, as well as Albedo that were posted yesterday to Stoke. Essentially, this has got people asking, are the Overlord characters going to get some buffs? Now, these posts, like I said, here's one for Einz, and you can see here there's one for Albedo as well. They go over the character and at the bottom, there is a poll asking the community what they think of the character for both PvP and PvE, right? And that is something that normally we do not get. Normally, if a character comes out and it's bad, there's not like a post asking for our opinions of it. People will complain to the CMs will receive that feedback and then they'll submit it up the chain of command. That's usually how it is. Never do we really get things like this. And other content creators have already talked about this yesterday when it went live, like Kana, Car6, right, have already talked about these. Go check out their videos to see what their takes are on the whole thing. But I wanted to wait till today, which is May 1st as I'm recording this, because the beginning of the month means Sensor Tower is out. And it's monthly report for all the revenues for Gotcha Games. Because one of the things that I always hear about from a lot of people is that they don't buff weak collab characters or weak Moonlight 5-star characters unless those characters do very poorly in sales. So, we'll talk more about Sensor Tower in a bit. But for right now, let's take a look at the actual character's kit. And I will kind of talk about my thoughts playing at both Ainz and Albeda for the last two weeks or so. And then we'll take a look and see what the actual polling is for the characters here. So, here is, first up, Lightning of Judgment. This is Ainz's S1. Uh, originally, I thought this was fine because it was just like a dizzy S1. Uh, synergized really well with Abyssal Crown, right? The problem is that the state of uh, E7 right now, in 2024, uh, a lot of teams are just so fast that like you'll never get set up. And the ones that you can set up against with Lightning of Judgment here, right? Where you're going to be playing Ainz. Uh, this move is really bad against it, right? There's Elbrus, there's Counter, uh, you fuel Abyssal Euphine. So this move is just not as good as I thought it would be. Uh, what I would change on it, that's not for me to really to say. I don't really know what I'd want to say, uh, do with it. But yeah, it's uh, it's more of a liability than a plus. Like I thought it would be really good, but it feels like it's a liability because of just how at risk the thing puts you. And again, a lot of the slower teams, uh, this either batteries them or they're just immune to stun anyway. So it's like, oof, uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of rough. Next up is the uh, the Overlord of Death passive. So this one, originally, I thought it was a really cool, like, lore thing. Because uh, the anime basically is like, oh, yeah, he could take damage from light elements. Well, this collab has forced me to pick up the Overlord light novels, right? And I've been reading through them. I've already read through the first volume. And I'm uh, almost through the second volume at this point. And because... Ainz is undead. He passively has a bunch of resistances to non-light elemental stuff. Light elemental magic is like a debuff on him. He does take a little bit more damage from it, but he takes damage, like less damage from almost everything else. Like he has like essentially physical resistance and resistances to other elements. Like it's basically just light and fire are the ones that deal uh, bonus damage to him, whereas everything else he just takes reduced damage across the board. I think from a lore flavor perspective, this is really cool. But I do think that uh, he's pretty easy to pick off. So maybe it might be better if Light Element did neutral damage uh, and Fire did neutral damage. And then like the other elements do like 10% less damage. That might be a better way to kind of inflict uh, or you know, the, instill that same level of flavor. Also, uh, Mana Barrier only procs at a 35% rate which feels surprisingly too low. I originally in my review, I didn't really seem to care too much about this, but when your whole gimmick is you got to get the counterattack stance up and, you know, lay down covering fire in order to, to get potential stuns to draw out the 12 turns you need for death sentence, 35% does not proc nearly often enough. There has been so many games where I've tried using him and it's like, this thing just will not proc, right? I just don't know why. I feel like it should be like 50%. Like, just straight up, I've gone multiple rotations in this thing not proccing, and it just makes me feel even more bad about a character that is pretty lackluster and inconsistent. And then, obviously, the big one here is the S3. 
Uh, the death sentence can be 15% absolute resistance, uh, 50% innate resistance. And that's like a major feels bad because the whole point of this character is to land this move, right? It's just, it should be like, maybe like Omen, like Lethe, like a lot of people have said, but getting 15% resistance is really bad, especially when I'm like, you know, 150, 180% effect in this build. And I'm targeting somebody like a Savior Odin, for example, like a character that I know builds absolutely zero ER and it gets 15% resistance. It's the worst feeling in the world. My character is just basically useless. Like I picked a character that's, that just does nothing for four turns for fun. Uh, and that that's just a really, really bad gameplay feel. So I definitely think that they need to do this. Like more than anything, this move needs to have ignore effect resistance on it. Or they need to change it mechanically so it works more like Lethe, right? It, it, it's just it's just not a good move. And considering this is the whole point of playing the character, it's just it's terrible gameplay feel. It's just absolutely atrocious gameplay feel. I think if they just fix this one thing, a lot of people would be happy, right? Like new players are having a blast with the character in Abyss, but uh, for the rest of us, it's not really uh, the best for the most part. So now you can see the poll here, scrolling down. For people who uh, voted here, we have 2,054 participants as of the time of recording. So how does Ein stack up in PvP? So the first one is a hero with high versatility. So this would be like your uh, your uh, your conquer Lilius, right? Your your OP OP characters, an irreplaceable hero, meaning they do something that no one else does. A strong hero amongst those of the same class. So this would be like, oh, it's one of the best like warriors, the best mages in the entire game, right? A hero with some flaws yet usable with affection, essentially saying that you know they're not the best, they're not really that good, but you can make them work if you try hard enough. And then a hero need a further improvement, basically saying they're not good and need a buff. And as you can see, 89.78% of players surveyed said that Ein needs a buff. And uh, 9.1% are saying that he's not, not good, but you could use him with some affection. And then you can see here for PvE, it's not quite as bad, right? 20.6% for f some flaws usable and 76.34% with a hero in need of further improvement. Right, so that that's pretty uh pretty telling that people really are not happy with the state of Einzel Gone in Epic Seven, right? So now we come on over here to my girl Albedo, who I've uh you know obviously I made a video on talking about it, uh but I've had some success with her, of course not when I'm streaming. Whenever I try to stream Albedo games, I have the worst luck ever. But uh, offline, I've had some pretty good success with this character. Uh, no need for words here. This S one. Uh, giving 20% CR is good. The multipliers on this thing are good. It's like 9% health scaling as opposed to 8% that you'd normally expect on a move like this. You get the extra true damage on successful attack. Uh, and then if you're on 3F, you just get, you know, pretty big damage, like 8K, 9K damage, which is pretty good for a character as tanky as Albedo. I have no real complaints with this uh, whatsoever. I mean, I guess the uh, a successful attack deals additional damage. Like if it didn't need this clause... Uh, she'd be much better into dodge units, which I think would make people feel a little bit better uh, about the character. But overall, I think that this is fine and it doesn't really need any changes. Uh, the S2 here, Aegis on full, 20% critical hit damage resistance. We talked about this in my Albedo video. It's the best in the game. That's amazing. We like that a lot. It gives her some flexibility as a tank. Let's her be played on Arius with like protection set if you so choose, uh, or even like Arius with like counter set. And for some people, that has been having the most success. Like her on Arius uh, with this passive has been doing wonders for a lot of people from what I'm hearing. But the thing is like, that's kind of like a boring play style. I feel like in a lot of people's eyes. So people don't really want that. Whether that's good or not, that's not the point. The point is that people pulled for a collab character not to get like a second copy of Crimson Armin essentially, which most people that watch RTA, you know, on Twitch and things like that consider the most boring character in the entire world to watch like people do not enjoy watching crimson armin games so having one of your collab characters essentially beat crimson armin is not exciting and it's going to get people kind of like stirred up and then the bicorn i lamented about how its damage wasn't exactly the best uh, and it felt like it was missing something in the previous video as well a lot of other people have agreed with me from what i can see uh except for cleavers cleavers don't want this move to be buffed in any meaningful way because it's the bane of Cleaver's existence. That's kind of what is happening with Albedo right now. She's kind of only really being played as like an Arius holder 
that's like an anti-cleave character, right? That's kind of how people are using her. I'm trying to still play her, fight the good fight, playing her as Bruiser. But uh, I recognize I'm in the minority right now. And then the S3, I still think is very, very strong. Full strip, two-turn, defense breaking on buffables, very, very good. Proccing 3F gets you some pretty significant damage, like 10 to 12k on this thing. Uh, I'm overall pretty pretty happy with this. So, like, it's just the, the S2, I think, is the major issue that I have with it. So, now, if you come down here and look at the PvP poll, you can see 62.43% are saying that the character needs buffs. And then 292 are saying flaws with, but usable with some affection. Um, and then you can see here that there's, like, some people say a strong hero amongst those of the knight class. Right? So, not as bad as Ainz, but still over 50% of people polled say that they need the, the character buffed. Uh, and then you can see here uh, for this one, PVE, we have 67% say she needs a buff uh, and then 24% here as well. So that's basically the community's thoughts on the, the characters, right? And like where they're at. They definitely are signaling that the character needs further improvement. There's not one for Shaltier because she's not legal yet and just came out, right? So now here's the main reason why I wanted to wait until today, which is our sensor tower report. Right. And as I said in the beginning, that people are saying that they don't buff characters unless they don't make money in this game. Right. And everyone's like saying, oh, Overlord's bringing so many people into the game. That's probably true. But if we scroll down here, Epic 7, we were 3 million average and we're 3 million this month. We dropped three places. So, we didn't actually make any more money off of Overlord than we did without the collab. So that's telling me that people are not spending on the Overlord collab, which is uh, disappointing, honestly. I think it's overall a pretty good collab. Is it the best one we've ever had? No, but I do think it's a good collab, right? I do think that the, the gear catch-up event is very good. Um, obviously, I think that the presentation for how Ainz, Albedo, and Shaltier, they look gorgeous. The lobbies are great. I love how generous they've been with everything. Um, a story, mm, definitely not the best. There's definitely been some better uh, collab side stories in other games. And even in Epic 7, like I still think Espa is the highest uh, quality uh, side story that we've ever had. Right? I, I think that one is just really, really good. This one in comparison... Not so much. So I wouldn't say like the collab's like a total failure. I think that the collab units not being the best uh, out the bottom, out the gate, I think really did hurt it uh, a little bit. As you can see, again, we didn't really move the needle whatsoever for what was supposed to be one of the bigger, more hype things. Like I was still very hyped for this collab, but there's no doubt in, in my mind that a lot of people probably skipped banners or didn't pull anywhere near as much as they would have. Because the characters, the initial reviews from them, the initial impressions of these characters were that they weren't as strong or uh, interesting in the case of like Albeda as people were hoping that they would be. So yeah, now that we know that and we've seen the air forms with the poles, are they going to get buffed? I think that they probably will, but we'll see. It is the end of the season. Albedo's banner ends tonight as I'm recording this video, so... Uh, if they're going to do something, better do it quickly. Uh, otherwise, people, I think, will be kind of upset uh, if they skipped on Albedo. By the way, if you are watching this and you didn't pull Albedo, at least get one copy just in the off chance that they decide to hotfix her after her banner ends before the collab actually finishes up, right? But yeah, I'll pass this question off to you now. Um, do you guys think that the Overlord characters should get buffs? And if so, what kind of time frame do you think that they should do it in? Love to hear any and all comments down below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.